Good morning, everyone. It's Mitch. It's uh, Friday, September 26th. Um, huge upset last night in Corvallis, Oregon. Uh, not too many people saw that coming, and I, I was with another one of those people that was taken by surprise. Uh, congratulations to Oregon State Beavers taking out the USC Trojans, uh, number one ranked in a lot of the polls. Of course, I didn't have them number one. I had them number four, but, um, you know, a lot of people did, and they, a lot of people had them penciled in for the title game. I didn't have them penciled in anywhere, but, um, you know, I certainly th- thought that they were a contender. Um, what I saw last night was a team that was unprepared unmotivated, um, poor game planning, poor play calling, and uh, really susceptible on that uh, penetrating defense to the uh, cutback uh, running style. Um, you know, real, really nailing those holes. I mean, it's just some huge running lanes opening up. I haven't seen ESPN. I haven't seen uh, any of the papers. I don't know what they're saying. Um, if they're spinning it, that it's a conference game and all this stuff, just remember, Oregon State got blown out by Penn State. They lost to Stanford. They're not a good team. Um, USC, what effect this has on the, on the program, on recruiting and all those things, it, it's their own making. Um, you know, you, you run a play with a, a Joe McKnight on third and long when you absolutely need a score. Joe McKnight is a great running back. He's going to be an NFL star. Um, he'll probably be a star before he's done at USC. But, um, you know, third and long, you absolutely need a score. You're t- people talk about your quarterback like he's the best quarterback you've had in years. And you've just had a Heisman Trophy winner in Carson Palmer. You had a national championship winner in Matt Leinart. And they're saying that this guy's better than both of them. And he's not even on the field on third and long on the, your opponent's side of the field when you absolutely need a score. Explain to me that game plan. Somebody, please. Thank you. Um, in any event, we're, we're done with that. Um, you know, we, we lost that one. We also lost at Tulane. Um, the Green Wave were up. Um, they were covering by halftime. The 17-point spread. Uh, they had a few calls go against them in the second half. They, uh, they didn't react well to the calls. They, they hung on and won the game. They did not cover. Uh, they looked to have let up. And, um, you know, th- those things are going to happen. We're not going to win every game every week. Um, we're not going to win every game this season. We're just going to hope to have a winning week, you know, almost every week. And we're going to hope to, you know, have a winning season, which we've managed to do just about every single year. So, uh, you know, we'll keep plugging along. we got a lot of action going on this weekend. And uh, we got some action going tonight. we got Connecticut uh, taking on Louisville. I, uh, you know, I, I'm on the Huskies this game. I think that we haven't seen the Huskies play their best football, at least in the scoreboard. And that's, you know, the, that's really where the games are won and lost, uh, you know, at the end. And uh, what's happened is the Huskies played in some weather, you know, because of the hurricane weather that came up on the East Coast. And um, they, they, uh, they missed some field goals. They didn't convert on some touchdowns. They had a couple of those fumbles going into the end zone that, you know, that, they, I mean, they, they hurt. You know, whether you're, you know, whether you're wagering on a team, whether you're a fan of the team, th- those are the ones that really, really hurt. And if you're on the other side of the ball, those are the ones that really, really motivate you. But in any event, Connecticut has had a seem- seemingly a-, a bunch of these squandered opportunities. And, um, you know, maybe maybe they put it all together. Maybe this is just a trend of the team. But we're going to find out more about them tonight because Louisville is another one of these up-and-down teams. They look terrible against Kentucky. I mean, Kentucky will make a lot of teams look terrible. And, I'll, you know, I go into how Rich Brooks is so underrated as a head coach and that's you know that's another story for another day but um you know Louisville look then comes out against Kansas State and looks pretty decent I mean they have Hunter Camp well they have Steve Crackthorpe who's a great coach and um you know he certainly gets paid like one as well and uh you know they have a lot of talent Bob Petrino didn't leave the cover bear there and Crackthorpe's a great recruiter in his own right so um you know it's an interesting game whether or not um you know Louisville can, can beat them by, by more than a field goal, I, I, I'm not so convinced. I think at most Louisville can beat them by a field goal, and, you know, that half point probably comes in. I'm not huge on this game. Uh, probably if it's not on a Friday night um, and it's the only game around, I'm probably not even making a pick on it, but, um, you know, because it is Friday night, it's the only game around, I am going to make a pick, and, you know, I, I, I always put myself out there anyway, so, you know, why not do it again? And, you know, I'm on Connecticut, and I say we'll take them small. And, uh, you know, maybe they convert on some of those opportunities. Um, you know, I don't think they're going to be the benefit of, uh, you know, calling for the fair catch and running it in for the touchdown like they did last year, which, I, you know, I talk about all the time on my blog about how bad the officiating is. But, um, you know, maybe maybe they convert on some of those field goals and touchdowns. Their kicker is very good, and, you know, he hasn't had 
the type of season that we really expected out of them. Um, on the Georgia Alabama game, uh, the earth is going to shake between the hedges uh, tomorrow night, and uh, you know I, I've got a pick. I've got some in-depth analysis on that one, and uh, I'm sending it out by form of my newsletter. I just want to test it out, see if everyone's into like something a little more in depth. Show you the numbers, maybe how I come up with my picks, and. Um, you know, as opposed to just my opinion, and then you know maybe some of the recent trends, which is my format on the on the blog. You know when I kind of explain the picks, but you know something just a little more in depth, just a feeler out there. You know, just for my newsletter subscribers, the um, you know the newsletter is free. It comes with a copy of my book. Um, you know the the book. It's it's it might be a little basic for some people. Uh, you still might learn something new. It's probably great for your friends, so maybe they understand. You know what you're talking about. I know that's why I wrote it in the first place. Uh, I. I do email out the newsletter. I'm not going to sell your email. I am not going to spam you. I hate spam. Um, it, I get a ton of spam. I have I have a blog. I have a very popular blog that uh, you know I have my email out there for everyone to email me. So you know, read my book. You'll get the newsletter. I'd love to hear your comments as to you know what you think of this different style of analysis. And uh, you'll get that in plenty of time before the game. So in any event, you know we've covered a lot here. Um, this is Mitch. And, uh, you know, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. we got a full slate of games. I'm really excited. And, uh, you know, as I said, that Alabama-Georgia game, it, it could be, you know, just one of the classics of our time. So uh, thanks for joining me.